So the story of David is is biblical. It's Old Testament. This is David who will become King David. And this is the story of David and Goliath that's actually being represented here. Yeah, although we only see David, obviously. <laughs> although, although he sees Goliath. He does. He very clearly sees Goliath, and he's aiming the slingshot, the stone, right at him. The story is that the Israelites are endangered by the Philistines, who have this giant of a man who is who terrifies who everybody. Terrifies everybody, and the Israelites are sure that they will be defeated because uh, Goliath, this giant. Except that this boy, here represented as a young man. He says, well, let me go. I'll, I'll face him. I'll face the giant. And everyone is, you know, what? you can't do that. You're just a boy. And they give him lots of armor to put on, so he's safe when he faces Goliath. And he takes off his armor and says, I don't need this armor. And he faces Goliath and defeats him with a single blow. And, of course, it's not the blow at all, really. It's the power of God that's behind David. It's one of those, you got God on your side, you don't really need anything else stories. That's a tough s subject to take on. After, after Michelangelo. After Michelangelo, after Donatello. And unlike the Michelangelo, where we can see the contour of the body almost uninterrupted, mm -hmm. here the contour is crossed and crossed again and crossed again by his arm, by the line of his neck by the claw, by the sling that he has across his chest. And so there's this sort of heightened spiraling of the body. Kind of forceful diagonal and twisting simultaneously. The tension in the rope as he's preparing to throw the slingshot, we feel that same tension in the twisting of his body. It's true, he's almost like a spring wound right. up, ready to release. Yeah, and look at him. I mean, his face is such incredible determination, it's concentration true. to it. And actually, look at the way he's biting his lips. It's just this wonderful expression. And, and pushing his eyebrows together. There is a kind of psychological insight I always see in Bernini. Yeah. And look at how he's made these lovely shadows in the rib cage and in the abdomen, really paying attention to the realism of the body. But this is a kind of realism as opposed to the idealism oh, of the High yeah. Renaissance. Yeah. And so in a way that is often said about the Baroque, we feel this, especially with David, we feel it in his body. We feel that tension and concentration as opposed to the sort of distant contemplativeness that feels with the Michelangelo. The more universal, the more eternal qualities that we associate with the High Renaissance. That's right. And this is much more momentary. And he moves out into our space. Yeah. You know, he, he twists. You almost feel like you want to duck out of the way. It's true. <laughs> you do. And it's a kind of visual tension that is constructed both through, through the actual physical form, but also through the, the treatment of the surface. I'm almost seeing Baroque painting here in the use of light and shadow. The shadow across his neck, the deep shadow on one side of his face, the illumination on the other. Of course, it depends on how he's lit, but the way the body is twisting against itself, these areas of deep shadow Absolutely. against illumination. Absolutely. And so there's a drama in the lighting. It's important, I think, even here, even in this freestanding sculpture, I think you can see his understanding of space, his understanding of the space around it. It's not only that he's oh, defining yeah. light, but he's defining the space around the sculpture, Absolutely. almost as if he's as if it's a kind of architecture of the immediate surrounding environment.